All right, Shalom. 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 First and foremost, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you elect across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. And Shalom to <coughs> believers that are out there that believe in the words of our testimony. All right, uh, this is going to be another class, another GMS Dallas class. Okay, and uh, today the topic is going to be Second Ezra, the 11th chapter. Okay, and uh, it's, uh, it's quite a big chapter, okay, but it's um, key prophecies that are written of nailing the book of Daniel when you read about that uh, fourth beast. Okay, matter of fact, that we can hold Daniel 7 and 7 going into that fourth beast. And when you read Second Ezra, the 11th chapter, it quantifies that fourth beast. Daniel had received visions of the first beast all the way to the fourth, but it wasn't all the way expounded to Daniel when that vision was given unto him. OK, but it was expounded unto Ezra for prophecy's sake. OK, and when you look at America, when you read it, well, when you read about Second Ezra 11, it's talking about. Ancient Rome and namely the 12 Caesars, the main Caesars that ruled in ancient Rome when you read about it in 2nd Ezra 11. All right. And uh, America tries to reenact it or they do. But when you read it in 2nd Ezra 11, that has nothing to do with America. That's talking about the, uh, the 12 Caesars that ruled in ancient Rome. OK, and we're going to go into that and we can start off on that Daniel 7, whoever has it. Daniel 7, 7. After this, I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible. The reason why it says dreadful and terrible, because when those Romans came into power, man, they did works far beyond those of the nations that preceded them. Okay? And they also put a lot of hell on the children of Israel. Like, under that rule, that's when the Israelites had to scatter into Africa and those were the Israelites that weren't captured and taken and thrown into the Colosseums and slaughtered and such. OK, so those Romans did a lot of works, not even just to Israel, but on the planet Earth, the known world around that time. OK, I believe iron weaponry. All right. Was more so uh, introduced through those Romans. All right. Go ahead. Dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had. And it had a great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the foot of it. Great iron teeth, you see. So when they when they when they um, started using that weaponry, that weaponry, all right, there was a lot of people that that had difficulties fighting against it. And even we're going to go into it in Second Ezra eleven, but it talks about how they had all the nations and subject in the, under check under them. Okay, when they came in power, them nations, they, the ones that tried to rise up, they failed miserably. Okay, because the Most High had used them as a major pivotal, pivotal piece in prophecy. Well, they were blessed with the sword, too. That's right. That's right. That's it. That's it. If I wanted to add uh, iron and stronger than brass. Right. Br brass or bronze. Right, absolutely. Physically. So, on a spiritual note, these empire, the empire that came uh, latter um, with the empire that's uh, in power at that particular time was uh, dealing with uh, more technology mm -hmm. and was given the technology from uh, Yahweh Yahusha. That's right. That's right, brother. The sword. They was given a great sword. Okay. I want to make a quick point just to lead into the, this idea. Um, whenever we look into Romans, the 11th chapter, at the top is going into the beginnings of what's known as Pax Romana. For those people... Romans 11. I mean, 2nd uh, Ezra, the 11th chapter, Salah, the water. 2nd uh, Ezra, the 11th chapter is going into the beginning of Pax Ro Romana and, and the list of the Caesars. Now, for y'all listening to the class, go look up Pax Romana, P-A-X-R-M-O-A-N-A. And it'll give you a brief history. This was when Yahweh Shai came on the scene as far as his preaching. Mm -hmm. And this is when Rome was like the obvious empire of the day. And I was going to read a little bit about Pax Romana and that'll kind of lead you into uh, Second Ezra. Come on. Come on. Right. So this is Pax Romana on Wikipedia. It says Pax Romana 
Latin for Roman peace, is a roughly 200 year long period in Roman history, which is identified with increased and sustained inner uh, hegemonial peace and stability, though not meaning without wars, expansion and revolts. It says it is traditionally dated as commencing from the ascension of Caesar Augustus, founder of the Roman Principate in 27 BC and, and concluding in 180 AD with the death of Marcus Aurelius. And we always talk about the downfall at 183, you know, with the September Severus, everything like that. It says... The last of the five good emperors mm -hmm. since it was inaugurated. That word inaugurated is another term right, that was right. taken from Rome that the U.S. presidents today use. Mm -hmm. Inauguration. Yes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And that goes back to the to the uh, the Augurines. The soothsayers yeah. that used to sit in uh, the seat of council for the Caesars. All mm -hmm. right? It's, and so that's where you get inauguration. It's all about witchcraft and... Studying birds. That's how Rome was named. Romulus and Remus. It was they was they they, they forecast who was going to be at the seat of power. That's right. Basically, the Augurians. That's exactly right. And so what happened was you had the the mythology behind it is that Romulus and Remus brothers, right, who were born of a she wolf, right, right. They right, had right, a battle right. in the um ba basically. Mm -hmm. The Augurians or uh, they, they would watch the bird mm -hmm. flights, mm -hmm. and um. You know, the birds landed on Romulus. Right. Mm -hmm. Saying that, okay, he was supposed to be the, the rightful successor or the beginning emperor. Mm. That's what became Rome known as the Roman, right. yeah, Roman right. Empire, okay? Mm. So that's where you get the term, he was inaugurated. Mm -hmm. mm. no, wow. Romulus was inaugurated, right? Interesting. Mm -hmm. So it says, it was, in, it was inaugurated by Augustus with the end of the final war of the Roman Republic. It is sometimes called the Pax Augustus. During this period of approximately two centuries, the Roman Empire tree achieved its greatest te territorial extent and its population reached a maximum of up to 70 million people. Um, it says, according to Cassius Dio, the dictatorial reign of Commodus, later followed by the year of the five emperors and the crisis of the third century, marked the descent from the kingdom of gold to one of iron and rust, mm. right? Which goes into mm -hmm. the Daniel. Absolutely, perfect, absolutely. You know I mean? So, Pax Romana, you can type that in and basically <clears throat> read that on Wikipedia and give yourself an even better understanding of the magnitude of the Roman Empire and its influence at that time. Right, con, con. Man, beautiful, man. <laughs> With that being said, let's go on and start Second Ezra 11. <laughs> this is uh, Second Ezra chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Then saw I a dream, and behold, there came up from the sea an eagle, which had twelve feathered wings and three heads. And when you go into that, all right, that's going into um, that, that eagle ultimately represents Rome. Okay? And it's very spiritual. That that links up to Mystery Babylon right now. It links up to Esau. Esau, right. All right. Shows you that when you read it in Deuteronomy 28, when it says we were going to be shipped off into a land like as swift as an eagle, shows you that it's going to be very similar or reflection of Rome. Okay. And those 12 feathers are talking about 12 pivotal, pivotal emperors that ruled. Okay. And when you go into those 12 feathers, the first one starts with Julius Caesar. Which a lot of historians aren't really gonna re really gonna um, relate him as being a Caesar, all right? More so an emperor, just because his last name was actually Caesar. When you go into that title of Caesar, it goes into his actual last name. You know, that's where the title of czars get. You get the Russian czars, those rulers, mm -hmm. and you also have Kaiser, like Kaiser Wilhelm. All right, those 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 Germanic rulers went by that title of Kaiser. It goes back to Caesar. So when you go into these 12 feathers, you got the first one being Julius Caesar. The second one, which a lot of scholars are going to acknowledge to being the first technical Caesar. Well, really, he was the second. All right. But it goes into Augustus Caesar. All right. And Augustus Caesar ruled between years um, 27 B.C. to 14 A.D. All right. And he was actually in the power seat when Yahweh was born. When you read it in Luke, the first chapter, it goes into how Caesar Augusta he was the king around that time, loosely paraphrasing. And we'll pull it up here in a little bit. 
The third was Tiberius, who ruled 14 AD to 37 AD. The fourth Caligula. Mm -hmm. Tiberius is when you read about him during the time of Acts. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Caligula was 37 AD to 41 AD. Claudius Caesar was 41 AD to 51 AD. Then you have Nero, which is a very popular name. All right. That we bring up very often. All right. You know, he's the one that uh, looks like Donald Trump a whole lot. All right. Acted like him, too. 54 I'm AD. You said what, Michael? Yeah. Yeah. Because you had a time of Acts that was in a family going on. And that's why they had to, uh, that's why uh, with the whole idea with, uh, with uh, Safari and, uh, and Ananias was a big idea because there was a, there was a family going on. Mm. Yeah. 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 I remember Mike Allen did a lesson on that. It was a good lesson too. Mm. Uh, highlighting like the tension that was going on that time. Of why it was so important for everybody, you know, bring what they had, and mm -hmm. like when you look at the dearth, because I think that's what it talked about in the that's scripture. Exactly what he said. It says that there's a dearth, yep. mm -hmm. and so when you, when you break it down and look at what was happening geoeconomically, mm -hmm. it was like, oh man, the Most High was dealing, you know, kind of straight the up. The whole ass niggas allowed. You yeah, know? That's straight up. That's why Paul was getting looking rent as well around that time because it was being selfish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And you had Nero. All right, and he was in charge when he hear of the whole burning of Rome. All right, it was really orchestrated by Nero. He was the mastermind behind Rome being burnt and blaming it on us. Okay, then you have um, what was called the Year of the Four Emperors in uh, Brother Ariala. The I believe you read, just read about that. Just a little, the Year of the Four. Oh, you said the Five Good Emperors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, then you have also what's called the, the the Year of the Four Emperors. Mm -hmm. It was four emperors that ruled in literally one year. What shows you the most high was hauling them, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they, they was killing, killing each other. Each other. Yep, yep, yep. yep, they was being yeah, demons. Yeah. You know, matter of fact, uh, real quick, uh, Romans, I'm sorry, Revelation, the sixth chapter. That was Ortho, Gobbin. It, it was, it was Galba. Yeah, Galba was. Vitellius. So what's the order of it? it? It was Galba that was first, and then it was Ortho afterward, and then it was Vitellius, mm -hmm. and then that's when Vespasian came in power mm -hmm. afterwards. Right. Flavian Dynasty began, yeah. Absolutely, and Vespasian was also a key general that was under Nero when that whole burning of Jerusalem had taken place as well. Okay? And, um, you know, Gath, uh, Vespasian was also was also reincarnation of Julius Caesar. And it goes in. Apostle Har mentioned that when you listen to the breakdown that he did going into that. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it's going to play a huge role into what we're going to continue to read about those three heads in 2nd Ezra, the 11th chapter. Anybody got that Revelation 6? That's cool. Right. <laughs> this is the book of Revelation chapter chapter 6. And I'm going to start at verse uh, 4. I'll read it for you, bro. Okay. Revelation 6 and 4, it says, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. To take peace from the earth. And that red horse represents Esau. All right. And Rome was a pivotal <clears throat> piece to take peace from the earth. Right. What we're about to read in 2 Ezra 11 is what he did to take peace from the earth. What he was doing. Okay, you got it. Another thing is uh, when you read Revelation 12, R Rome is noted as a red dragon. That's right. Mm -hmm. so you can tie that to that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Cause, and it's Noah's Rome because it was talking about Herod trying to devour mm -hmm. Yahweh Shai. So. That's right. That's right. Come on. Right. And Esau's red. Mm -hmm. You know Rome, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, as you're speaking, that, may, that, that ties in those the, the Romans with the Idumians. That's it. Because... Who is the father of uh, Herod Antipater? That's right. Antipater the Who got his way in by being a counsel mm -hmm. for John Macrinus II. That's right. So That's right. that lets you know that Esau Eden wasn't done away with. Absolutely. They here? You know? Absolutely. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, it says. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And that there was given unto him a great sword. A great sword. All right. To kill one another. And that's Esau's M.O. There's another right. Esau's that sword. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, he, he wanted to kill Jacob. Hmm. You know? So if he wanted to kill Jacob, why not his seed want to kill each other? And that's the spirit that they were in. When you go into those emperors, even how Julius Caesar died. He died by, by Cassius and Brutus. was two of the closest people to him. You know? And that whole stigma stuck. Especially when we read about these 12 men. Okay. That was it on that precept. Uh, we can continue. Um, 
Actually, yeah, we can continue on this broke down of um, the twelve feathers and such. Reincarnation from Cain and murder. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, when you broke, you 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 said Julius, Augustus, Tiberius, oh, yeah. Caligula, Claudius, Nero, Galba, Galba, or. Ortho, Vitellius, Vespasian. And Titus and Domitian. Titus the water. The water. Yep. Titus and Domitian. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Vespasian. Go Matthew 12, where it said, uh, a, uh, divided from themselves, a kingdom divided. That's right. Won't stand, mm-hmm. you know, because them dudes, these guys, these three in the middle, I think a couple of them killed by the uh, Praetorian guards, too. It mm-hmm. was, you know, it was Esau, man. Mm-hmm. They, yeah, Galba, Galba only ruled for, for seven months. Yeah, seven months, right. Six, seven months. Yeah. And then Otho ruled for three. Yeah. Yeah, it was quick time. Yeah, it was quick time. The year mm-hmm. four kings. That's right, a year of four kings. Yeah. Imagine America. You got four presidents in one year. You know, absolutely. Especially right now. Especially right now, man. You know, you this know is the Roman Empire was collapsing, too. That's right. That's the whole point. Like we mentioned, the, the dirt or the famine. Mm-hmm. Compared to when Augustus, he ruled for over what, 44 years? Yep. The longest, you know. He ruled the longest. That's right. She went downhill. <laughs> Con, absolutely. Absolutely. Con, so we can continue in 2nd Ezra, the 11th chapter. Con. 2nd Ezra 11 and 2, it says, And I saw, and behold, she spread her wings over all the earth, and all the winds of the air blew on her, and were gathered together. And those, those winds pretty much just represent the nation's that were under their influence around that time. Rome ruled the whole known world around this time. Obviously, this part of the earth wasn't really, I mean, it was known about, but it wasn't too many, it wasn't nobody inhabiting it for real, you know, except for the Northern Kingdom. But when you go into this, namely, it's talking about that whole realm of Asia Minor, Asia Minor, parts of Africa and such, you know, when it's going into that. And those nations were under that influence, the winds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Verse three, it says, and I beheld, in all of her feathers there grew other contrary feathers, and they became little feathers and small. And it's going to expound on those contrary feathers the further we go into this lesson. That's why I'm not going to go into it heavy right now. Just for the lesson's sake, just we can go and continue. Mm-hmm. Verse 4, it says, But her heads were at rest. The head in the midst was greater than the other. Yet rested it with the residue. All right. Now, when you go into those those three heads, and it's going to further expound on that later on in the chapter two. So you add twelve feathers, two wings, twelve feathers, three heads. Mm-hmm. All right. Those three heads within themselves still go into those twelve feathers because you add Julius Caesar. All right. He represents that head in the middle. All right. And then you had um, Crash, Pompey Crash, yes. and Crassius, mm-hmm. and that's what's also called the first triumvirate. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, when you go into the first triumvirate, the first triumvirate, I'm going to just read the, the definition. It says it was an informed alliance among three prominent politicians in the late Roman Republic. The constitution of the Roman Republic was a complex set of checks and balances designed to prevent a man from rising above the rest and creating a monarchy. And when you go into a monarchy, what that is, pretty much a monarchy is going into, let's say, for example, you have a king. The next person that's going to king is going to be the son of that king, the firstborn, and so forth. It goes into lineage, all right, because there was different kings in past that would use a monarchy for the next person to be in power. Well, the word monarchy means rule by one. Archie archi meaning rule and mono meaning one. Uh-huh. Rule by one. And so the purpose of the triumvirate at that time, it was not a, um, it wasn't written down. It was an understanding that they said that they was going to have. And what you had was Julius Caesar was the leader of the armies. He was, a, he was a military commander, while the other guys were more of political and economic leaders within Rome. And uh, Julius went out and fought with his armies. He's very known as a, as a people person. He was very charismatic. Mm-hmm. He rode with his soldiers. He slept with Stepping his soldiers. Up. He was an uppity. He was very down to earth, and the, and the soldiers loved him. Mm-hmm. And he took him into the expansion that you were reading about when they first started to expand the Roman Empire. They took down the Gauls, which are known as in the area of France and Portugal and Spain and all those areas. And they kind of expanded and brought riches back to Rome. And with that, what uh, Julius Caesar did was he made promises to the soldiers that he, they would have land, money. When you get back, when we come back, you're going to be eating. And he delivered. 
And so when he came back to Rome as a, as a god and crashes, Pompey, the other guys was like, yo, we said, yo, you he trying to, he trying to become, he trying to become a, the emperor, he trying to become, he trying to create a monarchy. We got to get this dude up out of here. So that's where you start to hear the, the. That's where you get the famous story of Et tu Brute. Mm -hmm. and you, you, you too, Brutus. You too, Brutus. Mm -hmm. Because he was the final guy to kind of stab mm -hmm. him in his back to take him mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was a conspiracy to take him out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but the, the, him being the head of Crashes in Pompeii was the fame that he got from his military conquest. Wow. Okay, the, that's how Julius. Go read about Julius. He was actually, you read about him, he was a, he was a G. <laughs> he wasn't a whole ass nigga. Mm. You know. Come. That's why you got the chicken balances concept here in this Yep, building. Absolutely. But yes, sir. Senate, you know what I'm saying? The mm -hmm. house and all that. Yeah, hey, I got a piece though. Yup. That's exactly right. And my Maccabees? Yup. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> that's the spirit. Yeah, that's the spirit too. Yeah. Uh, this is our first Maccabees 8 and uh, 15. It says, Moreover, how had they made. For themselves a senate house wherein 320 men sat in council daily consulting always for the people to the end they might be well ordered and that they committed their government to one man every year to rule out a monarchy pretty mm -hmm. much mm -hmm. who ruled over all their country and that all were obedient to that one and that there was neither envy nor emulation amongst them Con, con, and that's the spirit too when you go into this because America had adopted a lot of those customs anyway from those Romans, yep. like we had mentioned earlier. And that shows you, that shows you that your vote don't matter, okay? That shows you your vote doesn't matter. It goes all the way back to them back then. They chose who was going to be elected as their ruler and it still applies to the day, mm -hmm. all right? What it is with that vote just to, to make you feel good, make you feel like you did something. All sense of freedom. Yeah. Absolutely. And the Greeks were the beginning of this beast system. Anyway. That's right. Come, come. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, the what precept was that? Uh, this was our first map. Eight, 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 and I started at 15. 15. <clears throat> Pretty much that was the whole concept of voting leaders into power versus mm -hmm. the monarchy where right. a king, he just sets his son Absolutely. to be heir over the, the kingdom, you know? That's right. That concept started with the Romans. That's right. Mm -hmm. A monarchy? Huh? The monarchy started with the Romans? So no, the, the voting. The Oh, oh, power oh, okay. Versus the, the monarchy where like a king, he would just, you already knew mm -hmm. that if he had a son, that's who was going to be next that's to it. rule. That's it. But the Romans created the concept like mm -hmm. checks and balances to where the people, so-called people, vote the leader into power. Mm -hmm. and, and that's and also for a certain term too. That's where they get the term from. Con, con. Oh. And that's also another reason why they rose more quickly and had more structure than the other nations. Because there was times in history, we read about it in the scriptures. Where there was a prince that came up and being an heir and he was a whole ass nigga. Right. You know what I'm saying? But Rome changed it and they they voted people in, even though they were whole ass niggas. A lot of them was whack too. Right. But they voted him in for a reason because right. of his influence, what he had done. And that's another reason why they were so strong. All right. And a lot of people, they couldn't just get overthrown like other nations, you know? And that's just loosely, uh, uh, loosely paraphrasing it, mm -hmm. you know? But uh, we can continue. if anybody has any other points with that, let's continue on to Second Ezra eleven. God, continue on Second Ezra eleven. Oh, I just wanted to make this point for the people that's listening. Type in First Triumvirate. Yep. Yep. First Triumvirate. First triumvirate. Type that in and just read the first parts, and it'll talk about everything that we just said. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. God. Uh, Second Ezra eleven and verse four. It says, but her heads were at rest, and uh, the head in the midst was greater than the other, yet rested it with the residue. Julius Caesar was great, and it was acknowledged. We just literally went into that, too. <laughs> you know? Go ahead. Con. Verse 5. Moreover, I beheld, and lo, the eagle flew with her feathers and reigned upon earth, and over them that dwelt therein. Those are the, those are the winds everywhere. You know, it had that influence over the whole known world around that time. Okay. Yeah, and they also had vassal, vassals. That's right. It was a beast system back then too. Come. You know, that, Come. This was the first beast system, and then America reiterated it through this system. You know? That's right. Come. It says in verse six, and I saw that all things under heaven were subject unto her, and no man spake against her. No, not one creature upon earth. Right. They had that much influence. We just read earlier 
in Daniel chapter seven that they were given, um, they, it was a beast having iron teeth and they subdued the nations. Okay, now don't get it twisted. It wasn't like other the, uh, those vassals that the other that, that the elder just mentioned didn't try to conspire to come up against them, but just know that it didn't work. You know what I'm saying? It did not work at all because we just read about the influence that they had, the power that they had. You know, and also the brother just mentioned earlier as well, the Most High had gave them that power to subdue the nations. That's okay, right. so there was people that fought up again, that tried, okay, but it didn't work. You know, they had to play their role in prophecy. Just as everybody has to play their role in prophecy. That's why Babylon the Great had took so long to gain stature, which is America. And now we're seeing its, its fall because it had to fulfill a particular measure. One thing that we all have to remember is when there were particular kingdoms that was ruling, the Lord had done it. Okay, that's why hey, the scriptures also uh, yeah, loosely paraphrasing goes into how the Most High set us up one king after another, a nation after another. You know, Daniel talks about how the Most High will raise up the bases of men. These are the Edomites. These are the bases of men right here. Okay, but the Most High allows particular nations to rule to fulfill the measurement. All right, he's very calculated. All this is written anyway. Mm -hmm. So they had to play their role in prophecy for us to be here to do what we're doing today. You know, I got a precept. Come. This is uh, Daniel chapter two, verse forty. It says, "The fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, mm -hmm. for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise." So, yeah, even when you go on, even when you go into iron, bro, it is virtually. I go say it's indestructible because it can break. You know, but iron has to be when it's forged. It has to be forged in a very peculiar way. Mm -hmm. You know, so it won't be broken so easily. Mm -hmm. Carbon. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, car carbon, ca carbon as well. It has to be forced with carbon in order to make steel. The iron does. Okay, con, mm -hmm. con, the water. Mm -hmm. That's a bet. <laughs> Spirit is brother's here. Well, that's what you have. You take the iron ore and you mix it and you create steel weapons. Mm -hmm. And yeah, con. the time that it was unmatched. Yeah. That's right. Con. Beautiful. You was about to say something too? Uh, you pretty much broke it down. You said it already. <laughs> okay. Come on, come on. Uh, this is a uh, Second Ezra, back in Second Ezra chapter eleven, in verse seven, it says, "And I beheld, and lo, the eagle rose upon her talons, and spake to her feathers, saying, Watch not all at once. Sleep every sleep, every one in his own place." And watch by course. Go ahead. Next verse. Verse nine. Uh huh. But let the heads be preserved for the last. Preserved. The Most High preserved it. He had set them up for their for for their times. When you go into the eagle speaking, and it's saying to the feathers, "Let everyone have its part at their particular time." That goes into all twelve couldn't rule at the same time. We and earlier, all right, went into all the different emperors and even the time spans that they had ruled. Okay, so the Most High had established certain ones to rule for this period of time, that period of time, this period of time, and so forth. Okay, so that's what it means when it says, like the brother just read, all right, it says, um, Sulakia, what verse was that? Verse eight. Um, yeah, it says, uh, verse eight, watch not all at once, sleep everyone in his own place. Sleep everyone in his own place. All right, certain of them weren't, weren't, weren't predicted, not predicted, I'm sorry, weren't set up to be in power yet. Okay, Augustus had his particular time to rule. Tiberius had his set time to rule. Claudius and such. That's what that means when you go into that. It's a progression. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. It says in verse 10, And I beheld, and lo, the voice went not out of her heads, but from the midst of her body. Mm -hmm. And I numbered her contrary feathers, and behold, there were eight of them. Now, when you read this, this ain't talking about eight extra feathers on top of the twelve. It's this eight is talking about of the twelve. All right. These contrary feathers were also mentioned early in the chapters going into the small feathers. OK. And all that's talking about is just the Roman rulers that didn't have. I don't want to say necessarily as much influence. All right. But they didn't rule as long as particular other ones. Mm -hmm. OK. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says, and I looked, verse 12, and I looked and behold, on the right side, there arose one feather. And reigned over all the earth. And those are those particular rulers that ruled in their set order and arrangement. And the same followed with the left wing. The same order and arrangement the Most High had them set up to rule in. Go ahead. It says, and reigned over all the earth, verse 13. And so it was 
that when it rained, the end of it came, and the place thereof appeared no more. So the next following stood up and rained and had a great uh, had a great time. Had a great time. That's talking about Julius. That's talking about Augustus. Well, the first, the, yeah, verse twelve is yeah. talking about Julius. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that feather. And then, and then Augustus, yeah, the water. Augustus had that great time. Out of all those 12 feathers, Augustus ruled the longest. There were no other rulers that ruled half the time. The brother mentioned it earlier. Augustus ruled 40 to 41 years. All right, that was unheard of back then, you know. And a matter of fact, um, it's in Luke, the first chapter. We can get that really quick just to show because the scriptures, people like to talk about how the Bible is a mystery, a fairy tale, a fable. Right. And they'll say that all oh, none of this stuff really existed. Right. If that's the case, why was Augustus mentioned in the book of Luke? Mm -hmm. okay. All the world should be taxed. Yep. yep, exactly. And we can we can get it. This is in on the coin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, this is in Luke two, Salakia. Mm -hmm. This is Luke two and one. It says. And it came to pass in those days that there was there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And when you read it in the NLT version, it says, and at that time, Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. And that's another example that shows you that America is Rome as well, because America does the same exact thing. They do a census and they've been very heavy on that census Recently, yeah, no, making sure that you who you are and where you, you where you need to be. Why do you think so? OK, so that's another example that shows you this is wrong. But to show you that there is his this Bible is the history book. Mm -hmm. All right. It's a book of many things. but One of his roles that it plays is a history book and it goes throughout key pivotal points of history. Right. OK, so it's not a fable. It's not a mystery. No, no fairy tale, man. That's what they want you to believe. And that's why you in the docile state that you in right now. Which is a spirit that the spirit and Satan that's in you anyway. OK, but the Bible is true. All right. And we're reading this in Second Ezra 11, by the way, man. A lot of people will say this isn't canon. Mm -hmm. They'll say it's not original. Mm -hmm. This goes in history. And when we read it, when we continue, not only does it go in history, but it wasn't by mistake where it said this second feather ruled longer than all the other ones. And Augustus just so happened to rule way longer than the other ones. Come on now, man. Right. This was written 400 years dang near before Julius Caesar was even born before he was thought of okay so this is very well indeed canon man all right this book is faithful and true that's right that's okay right. written four times that's right man that's right I just wanted to make a quick note this is something that Apostle Kabar goes into uh, as far as this to how they used to uh, take note of who was and who who was there that's right that's and right. uh, how to get the money, that's how, where you get the term calendar. The word calendar goes back to the word kalends back in ancient Rome. is when they would announce the first day of the month to, so you could pay your debt and your taxes. Mm -hmm. That's where you get calendar from. Because mm -hmm. it's all centered around that. And that's why they call it the yep. calendar. That's why you get paid on what? The first and 15th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get that from kalends. Very interesting. Which wow. is Roman. And uh, when you look it up, it says the kalends... It says, is the first day of every month in the Roman calendar. The English word calendar is derived from this word. The Romans call it this first day of each month, the Kalends, signifying the start of a new lunar phase. Mm. On, <laughs> on this day, the pontiffs would announce the number of days until the next month at the Curia uh, Calib Calibra. In addition, debtors had to pay off their debts on this day. And these debts were inscribed in the calendar, calendria, effectively an accounting book. Wow. Damn. Man, this is Rome 7.0. <laughs> <Man. laughs> Come on. The image of the beast yeah. spoke. Like That's right. right. Spoke it like, yeah. Yeah. Mm. He gave life to the beast. He gave life to the beast. This is it. Man, wow. Matter of fact, we need to continue that Daniel 7, right? Uh, there's a little more to it because it goes into what we're going into. Halfway through the verse. Yeah. I think the verse eight talks about guys about, about America. I think that little horn. Matter of fact, this song. Yeah, we can just get this real quick because the, the elders and the brothers just spoke what they just said. Daniel seven. Daniel seven. Yep, seven okay. and seven. Daniel seven and seven. And after this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. 
It was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Mm -hmm. And so I those vassals, those vassal states, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were diverse because we, we broke that down. They got they had the Senate how they voted. Mm -hmm. you know, we it says, "I considered the horns, and beheld, and behold, there came up among them another little horn." Another little horn. All right. So that fourth beast is not talking about America, but that little horn is that. It's mentioned there. It snuck in there real quick. That quick jazz. <laughs> yeah, right. It shows you that that's America right there. Because they influence. Hey, that, that horn is nothing but part of that beast anyway. It came out of it. Beast. It came right. out of it. Right. You know. Yeah. So Rome has that influence on America and why America does what they do today. Mm -hmm. All right. Very yeah. similar. Rome reincarnated. And how you know that uh, it's talking about America is because right after that, judgment comes. Yeah. That's the right. The Lord sets his judgment. That's right. And the end is going to come through Babylon mm -hmm. being destroyed. It's just an extension of that fourth beast. That's right. You know, he brought it back to life. Mm -hmm. Started with the Renaissance period and ended all the way up Man. to Babylon the Great. You know what I'm saying? They, they fully revitalized mm -hmm. themselves with that beast system, you know? Mm hmm. Con, con. Fatness of the earth. That's right. You, know? you had a point, Mike Holler? You know, I was standing like this one time. Oh, con, con, con. Um, that was that was the main point on that in Daniel. Mm -hmm. We can jump back to that in Second Ezra. Okay. Continuing on, Second Ezra chapter eleven and verse fourteen, it says, "And it happened that when it rained, the end of it came also, like as the first, so that appeared so that it appeared no more." So August, just like Julius' rule happened, and it was no more. Augustus ruled for them forty to forty-four years. After he ruled, it was no more. Then Tiberius came. Okay, go ahead. Verse 15. Then came there a voice unto it, and it said, Hear thou the hear thou that has borne rule over the earth so long. And this is still that second feather. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is still Augustus. Hear that that bear rule over the earth so long. Imagine Donald Trump being president for 40 years. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Obama. You like, 120? Yeah, that's unheard of. You know, this is a, you know, especially when it comes to this way of kings being brought into a system. All right. Now, monarchies were different, you know, because, again, it went into the air after that person died or was about to die. The next one be raised up. But this to have but for this to happen in this type of way was something that was strange. It, it's strange. OK, but it was also fresh as well. All right. Go ahead. Continuing on, it says, hear thou that has borne rule over the earth so long. This I say unto thee, before thou beginnest to appear no more, there shall none after thee attain unto thy time, <laughs> neither unto the half thereof. Not even half. And Tiberius was close, all right, to half. <laughs> but it, it still, if it wasn't half, it was right at pretty much dang near half. Okay, but Augustus ruled the longest out of all the 12 emperors of Rome, those 12 Caesars. Okay, go ahead. Then arose the third and reigned as the other before and appeared no more also. Mm hmm. Which that was uh, Tiberius? That was Tiberius. Okay, okay, okay. And he ruled 23 years. Okay. Which pretty much shows you it was 44 to 45 years okay. Augustus ruled anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, because that would be right at half or right under half. <laughs> but it was 23 years that Tiberius ruled and the, the other Roman emperors started ruling in smaller amount of times like... Like Caligula only ruled for five years. Claudius ruled for 10. Nero ruled. He ruled for 14. And then you got the four emperors. And then it just goes, goes from there. You know what I'm saying? So the Most High had them fighting one another. Like we just read. And, you know, there was a lot of grimy stuff that was going on with them. These are Edomites. And Edomites ruled the sword and they're power hungry. They're known for stabbing their brother in the back. They're a divided house. That's, That's right. a divided house. That's right, brother. That, that, that is divided against the Mm -hmm. The simple fact that we got to read about these 12 feathers and 12 is a big number of them ruling in this time shows how divided they are, right. you know, and the inner fighting that was going on, you know, and it's completion. that's right. OK, it's, it says verse 19. So went it with all the residue one after another as that everyone uh, reigned and then appeared no more. They had their time like we read and then it was done. Mm -hmm. OK. Then I beheld, and lo, in process of time, the feathers that followed stood up upon the right side, 
that they might rule also. Okay, so those feathers at the left side had their time. All right, which were the first six. Then the feathers on, on, on the other side had their time, which were the second six, which again goes to 12. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. It says, and some of them ruled, but within a while they appeared no more. Mm -hmm. For some of them were set up, but ruled not. Go ahead. <laughs> After this, I looked. And behold, the twelve feathers appeared no more, nor the two little feathers. And and even those two little feathers are still within the twelve. Mm -hmm. That's still part of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, when it goes in the contrary or little, it just means less significant as the other feathers. Mm -hmm. That's all it's talking about. It ain't like it was two extra feathers on top of the twelve. And no, it's all embodied within the twelve. Like I mentioned earlier, even these three heads are still part of those feathers mm -hmm. when you go into the history of it. Come, okay. Come. Verse 23 And there was no more upon the eagle's body But three heads that rested And six little wings Okay, three heads that rested Alright, the six little wings are those contrary feathers On the other side The three heads that rested We mentioned earlier going into the first triumvirate With Julius Caesar and the other two men Crassus and Pompey That's right mm -hmm. Now, right here when you go into these three heads That is about to mention all right. This is going into the start. All right. Of Vespasian. And then his two sons that was ruling afterwards, which were Titus and Domitian. Flavian all right. The, Fla out. the Flavian dynasty. OK. And when you go into that word Flavia or Flavius. OK. That word actually means blonde or yellow, which shows you that they are Edomites. Like a all right. Like, yeah. Because the Lord said you look like a fox. So he probably had like a, mm -hmm. like the like a light. Kind of tone. He was like one of them yellow bone cats yeah, that had yeah. that that yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Cause you know he hair yeah hair out was he he looked like a light skinned Jake right, but he was an Edomite yeah you know and yeah, more so his uh, characteristics he had the characteristics of a fox right you know that basically that was Amalek that was those fake Jews all over straight there. up you know that mm -hmm. and John, that's crazy our forefathers was cursing their asses out gone you know? that's right that's right. Man, matter of fact, I got that, that uh, definition of that Flavia. Flavia. That's heavy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's talking about Esau, man. This, these are the Edomites. <laughs> yep. and, and, and the proof is that it's an eagle. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's, it's very clear. Yeah. Yeah. Prophetically, this ain't Japheth. Prophetically, this is Esau. God. When you go into it, I typed in a, you know, Flavia, meaning of Flavia, and it says blonde, yellow hair. Wow. You know, goes into that. And there's also a book. There's a book that's called Madden's Jewish Coinage. All right. And it just goes into just 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 history of, you know, coinage and other things that apply to ancient nations. Not even just not even just the Jews. But, so what? Come. And when you go into that book, there's a particular page in that book and it's titled the, the, the Princes of Edom. And it goes into different coins. And those coins, when you read it, it says the faces of Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian. All right. And that's in a book called Madden's Jewish Coinage. All right. In that page, it calls Titus, Domitian, and Vespasian princes of Edom, which are another examples that show you that these are the Edomites. And just because we say blonde hair, blue eye doesn't always mean that an Edomite has to necessarily have blonde hair, blue eyes. But that's, their, that's one of their M.O.'s. You go into a so-called white person, you think blonde hair, blue eyed. Like when you watch that movie Ali, you know, I ain't gonna pray no blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Goes ultimately just goes back to Edom. Obviously, Edomites can have brown hair, brown eyes, whatever. But it goes back to the so-called Caucasian. All right, and that's the natural look that they have. Okay, the pure leper, yep. blonde hair, blue eyes. Yeah. Gone. Yeah, that's it. That's the it's the uh, picture. Verse 22, the two little feathers, that's Titus and the mission. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Those two other feathers, Salakia. Those two other feathers are Galba and Otho. Okay. You know, very small, because they had those small times. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But uh, we can continue. Okay. We can continue where we left off. Okay. Continuing on, Second Ezra chapter 11, and verse 24, it says, Then... Saw I also that two little feathers divided themselves from the six and uh, and remained under the head that was upon the right side for the four continued in their place. Mm -hmm. And I beheld and lo, 
the feathers that were under the wing thought to set up themselves and to have the rule. And I beheld, and lo, there was one set up, but shortly it appeared no more. Shortly, Galba, Otho, Vitellius, Vespasian. Oh, you know, those three, those first three, mm -hmm. very shortly. Mm -hmm. Again, I got it written down too. Galba was the one set up and only ruled seven months. Otho was the second after Galba and only ruled and only had rulership for three months. Yeah, Did I, I write it? I got you. Come, come. This is the Flavian Dynasty in Wikipedia. It says the Flavian Dynasty ruled the Roman Empire between 80, 69, and 96. Encompassing the reigns of Vespasian and his two sons, Titus and Domitian, the Flavians rose to power during the Civil War of 69, known as the Year of the Four Emperors. Mm -hmm. After Galba and Otho died in quick succession, Vitellius became emperor in mid-69. His claim to the throne was quickly challenged by legions stationed in the eastern provinces who declared their commander Vespasian Emperor in his place. It says the second battle of, of Badriacum tilted the balance decisively in favor of the Flavian forces who entered Rome in December 20th. The following day, the Roman Senate officially declared Vespasian emperor, emperor of the uh, Roman Empire, thus commencing the Flavian dynasty. Although the dynasty proved to be short-lived, several significant historic, economic, and military events took place during their reign, which is why prophecy is mentioning them. Come, the water. Uh, continuing on in verse... Uh... I can read it. Okay, come, come. Continuing on in verse 26, it says, And I beheld, and lo, there was none, there, excuse me, there was one set up, but shortly it appeared no more. Mm -hmm. Verse 27, And the second was sooner away than the first. Sooner away than the first. Also, three months. Go ahead. And I beheld, and lo, the two that re uh, excuse me, the two that remained thought also in themselves to reign. Mm-hmm. And when they sent the space. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. You see how it's lining up perfectly with prophecy? Right. Yep. Like, come on, bro. Can't tell me this book ain't just there was regular people that just thought to just put this together. This is inspired by the Most High, man. That's right. Matter of fact, I'm in Peter. You know, just to pull this precept out, to bring this, you know, to aid in the spirit of things. Actual history book. That's right. I believe it's in First Peter one and twenty, or Second Peter one and twenty. And they were moved. That they were moved through the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Second, Second Peter. Peter. Yep. This is the book of Second Peter, chapter one, verse twenty. I got it. That's all. That's all. All right, here. That's cool. It says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. This is a prophecy we're reading about right now. You know, it wasn't just a random person. William Shakespeare just wasn't in the cut putting this together, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, yeah, come on, bro. Yeah, right. Verse 21, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. This is an ancient prophecy that we're reading about. 400 years before it actually happened, by the way. It says, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men of the Most High spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so when you read this, this is actually a conversation, you know, Uriel was dealing with. The Most High was dealing with Ezra so much that not only did he send an angel down, he sent his archangel down to sup with him, which is Uriel, one of his holy angels. All right, and the Most High was feeding this information and using Uriel to feed this information to him. You know, when you go on to that word Uriel, Yawar Allah, that means light of the Most High. Okay? So the Most High was dealing with them, bro. Just like the Lord's dealing with all of us. And we have very grave information that's been distilled within us to be able to receive these things. Especially here within this day that we're in right now. Okay? A lot of people would desire to read this. You read this to a regular person, they ain't going to even want to know what it's talking about. They're not going to care. You know? So we have to have a different spirit on us to not only want to learn this, but to understand this, you know, so don't take this lightly. It's a very important thing that we part of. We are men that were moved, that are being moved by the Most High to be able to interpret these words and pour it out and distribute it. OK, we've been given heavy lots. Be grateful for it. You know, Psalm 68 and 11. Uh, the Lord gave the word 
great was the company of those that published it. And when you go into that word publish, it means to declare like the gospel, to utter. Okay? And that lie has been given unto us. To make public. Exactly. Absolutely, to make public. And that's what we're doing on the highways and hedges, the lessons that we do. That's what the spirit has been placed on us to do. That's our job. Okay? Just as you got your job to go to work or whatever your job is, this is our job. That the God of heaven and earth, by the way, the omnipotent, had given unto us. Which shows us we ain't insignificant. We are very significant. God of heaven and earth that created everything. Gave you this top shelf knowledge. to, And he gave it, you know, to be responsible with. All right. And we could possibly be those future rulers, man. So we've been given something grave, man. You know, we was going into it last week in your class, bro. That engrafted word. <laughs> this is part of it, man. Okay. Go ahead. Come. Continuing on in verse 28, I'll read it again. And I beheld, and lo, the two that re uh, remained thought also in themselves to reign. Mm -hmm. And when they so thought, behold, there awaked one of the heads that were at rest. You know, because you had the two head, those two feathers, which Flavius, uh, not Flavius, I'm sorry, Vespasian was one of them. All right, but this is when he's rising up into power. And this is the start of that Flavian dynasty where those three heads had awakened. All right. To a degree, it was like the first triumvirate, except for the only difference was Titus and Domitian were his sons. But they were still all in that agreement with another, you know, just like when you read about, you know, the other ones we talked about. Part of the same clip. You know, absolutely. OK, so verse 29, you says going into the Flavian dynasty. Yeah, when you go into those three heads that's being reawakened, mm -hmm. that's going into the Flavian, that's going into the, to the start of the Flavian dynasty. They okay. led the siege of Jerusalem too. They led the siege, of, and it's going to go into the, absolutely, that, beautiful, because it's going to go into that here in a second. All right. And hell was being put on Jacob. Man, absolutely. The three heads that's in, um, the what is it, 23rd verse, it's synonymous with the second triangle. No, no, no. The second triumvirate was with um, Octavian, which is Julius Augustus. Augustus. All right, and Brutus and um, and his name's the Leban or Le Leban, something like Le Lepus, I believe, something like that of that sort. Lepinus, that's his name. But that's the second triumvirate. This, th this right here, these three heads. It isn't the second, but it's just like a to a degree a reenactment of the first. You know what I'm saying? But no, it's not. It's not the second triumvirate. Mm -mm. Didn't you say uh, I'm talking about the 29th verse you know, Yeah the 20, that's, the, that's, the that's the Flavian dynasty mm -hmm. When you read it earlier in the chapter Going into those three heads Alright that was the first triumvirate And this right. is like you know Vespasian came later on as a reincarnation Of Julius Caesar Right. Okay. That's what, okay. You know what I'm saying Where you go into these three heads that had awakened right now Come, come, come. It's all good. It's all good. You know, the, the second triumphant was literally was literally right after the first. It was literally right when Augustus was in power. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, verse 30, it says, And then I saw that the other two heads were joined with it. T Titus and Domitian. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. It says, and behold, the head was turned with them that were with it, and it did eat up the two feathers under the wing that would have reigned. Mm-hmm. There you go, Vespasian. All right. Eating up the other ones. Bro, it was a lot of backstabbing that was going on between those Romans, those Edomites. That's why I was the year of the four emperors. And they got in there and got out quick, you know? Obviously, other than Vespasian, because he was the fourth, but also, too, the head, you know? Go ahead. So, so who was it that ate up the two feathers? It was the it was um it was Vespasian. Vespasian. Okay, come. Because mm -hmm. okay. you're gonna read. We're gonna read about the other heads that ate another one up. <laughs> come. On. It says verse thirty two. But he, but this head put the whole earth in fear, and bare rule in it over all those that dwelt upon the earth. Yeah, this is going into the hell that they was putting on Jake as well. All right, the brother mentioned earlier, starting with 66 AD. All right, starting with 66 AD to, se um, to 70 AD. All right, that's when you add the siege of Jerusalem. Okay, and that's also written in um, when you go into the writings of Flavius Josephus. Okay, he goes into that in grave detail when you read about that in that book. 
All right, it just wasn't quick. It took time. It took a few years to actually see Jerusalem and go in there. All right, they had to cut off food supply, water supply, dig. They literally dug under. You know, it was a lot that they was doing. Okay, but they was putting they was putting the earth in in hell, starting with us. You know, matter of fact, um, come on, come on. It brings that narrative out too, and it says names too. Vespasian and his son uh, Titus and Titus and his son 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 Titus Verse 28. Because Yahweh Shai told, told Jake this. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yahweh Shai told Jake that this was going to happen. And this is the time period where this event had transpired. This was well after Yahweh Shai's crucifixion. You got it. That's also in the curses, too. Mm hmm. That's right. Uh, Luke 23 and 28. But Yahweh Shai turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves. They was weeping for Yahweh Shai when he was getting beat. He was carrying that stake with Simon. Up there, that's when they started weeping for him. And he's saying, don't weep for me, weep for yourself. <laughs> Go ahead. And for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear. So that shows you how severe this time period was when, when the, the, during the Flavian dynasty. All right, because Jake was being starved out, eating children, doing all and above. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's coming. That's right, my Allah. Yeah. It's coming all over again. Right. Now, Yahweh Shai was talking about the scrape. A lot of these prophecies are as duality involved in them. Yep. All right. You just got to be spiritual to be able to see it. That's why Ecclesiastes said there's no new thing under the sun. Okay. Just as Jake caught hell around the time of Nebuchadnezzar, Jake caught hell around the time of Antiochus Epiphanes. When you read about that in Maccabees, Jake caught hell. Around the time of the Flavian dynasty, Jake is about to catch hell in the latter days during Jacob's trouble. And it's time that we end right now, man. And their true intent is to get to that temple. That's right. And it, it took him it took him a long ass time because Jerusalem is a defensed, mm -hmm. it's fortified it's city. That's right. It sits on a hill. It's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. so it took him a while. This time the defense city is gonna be defended. You know what I'm saying? Because ultimately right. they knew we get they if we gotta take these people down, we gotta get that temple. That's right. They knew, you know what I'm saying? That's a great point. Yeah. That's a beautiful point. That's why they're going to try to put a mark. They, yeah. Name, but they want to get at the temple. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. You know, because yeah. when that's gone, it's over. It's over. No way to sack a spiritual <laughs> temple. And you always talk about yeah. that. Yeah. We are the spiritual temple. Absolutely. That's why they're trying to attack us. Well, that's why they want to put a chip inside of you yeah. to defile that temple. Defile the temple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like even around that time period of, uh, I forgot what emperor that it was. I believe it was Caligula. He wanted to put his actual um, statue inside of the temple back before. You know, and there was actually conflict going on back then within that. There was even strife. You know, certain scholars, I'll say, <clears throat> certain scholars will say there was even strife that was going on between the apostles for it. You know what I'm saying? But um, he wanted to put his own image within the temple, which he succeeded at that because it was it was physical anyway. OK, but that's why they want to put that chip inside of you to do it all over again, just in a more dynamic fashion, dynamic and subtle at the same time to the carnal man. Okay. Go ahead, Tasha. I got you. Uh, this is underneath Caligula under uh, in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Going down, it says Caligula pursued his pretensions to divinity further in the summer of 40 A.D. He ordered his statue to be erected in the temple at Jerusalem, mm -hmm. but under the suave per, uh, persuasion of Herod Agrippa, Caligula countermanded this potentially disastrous order. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. The Roman populace had by now grown wary of this mad and unpredictable tyrant. Yeah, he was and several conspiracies were formed against him. In January 41, four months after his return to Rome from Gaul, Caligula mm -hmm. was murdered at the Palestine Games by uh, Cassius Caharia. A, a tribune of the Pictorian Guard. The Pictorian Guard was always used to hit, to hit niggas. Gone. Yeah, they get, they get Gone. Hey, some good movies on the Pictorian Guard. Yeah, for, for water for that, because uh, I got it mixed up with the image of jealousy that was in the temple where I said it was erected in there. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The water, the water for that. 
And, uh, Go ahead, Tasha. Going into what you were going into uh, about them when you put the mark in you, you know, it, it, uh, there's a precept, uh, I can't remember it verbatim. How does it go? It, it says, uh, He that defiles the temple of the Most High, to him I should truly destroy. Okay. You know, so uh, uh, that's, that's, that's them trying to force that mark. Con. You know, so con. That's your part. That's your part. Beautiful. We can go back into this in Second Ezra 11 unless you got a precept. Um, I was still, he's still one more than that, that Luke was at it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 12, right? Revelation 12 as well. That's right. That was pretty much it on that Luke where they said they want the mountains to fall on us. Okay, yeah, I can read that part. Yeah, okay, right. okay. Yeah, Luke, okay. Uh, 23, and, uh, middle 29. Blessed are the barren and the wounds that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us. And to the hills cover us. Because a lot of people, especially, oh, I'm going to say this, the people that aren't in the know, these regular, I should say, bystanders, they're going to bear witness to a lot of death. Like the prophecies go into, like the curses go into that the brother mentioned. They're going to eat their kids. They're going to go above and beyond to try to, to, try to make sure that they're self-sufficient, uh, self-satisfied. You know, that's why we're going to have joy in that day where everybody else sorrows. Right. That's why the scriptures say, thy sorrow shall be turned to joy. When they are in sorrow, we're going to be in joy. Yes, All right. And it said, they shall, they shall be hungry, but we, my servants shall eat. eat. Okay. Goes into how the elect are going to be taken care of around this time. Okay. That was uh, it on that one right there. You got that in Revelation 12, right? Come. I got that. Come. Verse 12. And yeah, ver oh, chapter 12. Verse 13. Right. Starting verse 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. Earth help the woman. 13. Yeah, starting at verse 13. Okay. Right, right, right. This is Revelation 12 and uh, 13. And, uh, Slaka, Yadika, and Yashua Wamba mentioned earlier, when you read about this dragon here in Revelation 12, it's talking about the Roman Empire. All right. And we read earlier in Daniel 7 that this little horn that came out of that beast is an extension of that Roman Empire, which is talking about America. So you're going to find little clues in here about America as well. But namely, it's going into the Roman Empire, which is that dragon. OK, go ahead. Kind of, uh, Revelation 12 and 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. That woman is talking about Jerusalem. Okay? Talking about Jerusalem. And the man child, namely, is talking about Yahweh Shai. That's the man child. Okay? Go ahead. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might flee into the wilderness. Now, this is a different eagle. Okay? And those two wings are going pretty much just going into just the southern kingdom that fled into the mountains, that fled into Africa. The ones that were able to escape, right. by the way, and because not all Israel fled out. They didn't have the opportunity to. A lot of Israelites died. There was millions of Israelites that died under the Flavian dynasty. Those Israelites that were captured in 70 AD. All right. When they seized in there and taken it and went into the temple, sacked the temple, took all the gold. A lot of them were thrown into those gladiator pits and mauled by lions mauled by champions and they suffered heavy persecution even after that okay it was millions of israelites that died that were taken captive under those edomites around that time all right so jake was catching holy hell around this time okay and then those that were able to escape all right is which we're fruit from technically okay because they went into africa dwelt there traveled all the way south thousand years you know and then later on transatlantic slave trade yep you know, go ahead. You notice they were primarily in West Africa, right there. It's perfect for them ships. To right, right, right. <laughs> All coastal. Yeah, yeah. Like, what were the odds of that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Straight up. But it makes sense because yeah. Israel's on the coast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> by that water, you know. Take no water. Take water. Water. Take but water. it's just dope how they were primarily in that area. Right. Easy to, for them to round them up and take them Man. right there. I mean, port, city, port cities were always the most popular places yep. to be because yep. of trade and yep. being able to move goods to and forth, you know. Oh, yeah. So port more. cities all throughout the scriptures is the main cities that's mentioned because it's this epicenter of movement and mm. finance and thereby policy and everything. So mm. you didn't want to be too far from the water because yeah. you're literally isolating yourself from natural resources. Straight up. You know? right. so, Straight up. When you read the scriptures, either you high up or you're by the water. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Yeah. That's why Tyree was so uh, popular. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yep. They would ship those trees yeah. from, from the water. Yeah. Easy access to get right over there to where we was at, over there by my Mariah. Mm -hmm. Man. Everything was, everything, everything was shipped. 
everything was moved. Needed to be by the water. Come on. I'll read 14 again. Yeah, but I'm sure. It's like you. Come on. This is our Revelation 12 and 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might flee into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time times. from the face of the serpent. Yep, that's it. That goes into that period we were in Africa until we got taken again. You know, by those Edomites again. Yep, <laughs> uh-huh. West Coast Africa, yep. And also, too, in, in the midst of that time, we were in Africa, you know, that's where that falling away happened as well. A lot of us lost our heritage. You know, I mean, we were still practicing our customs and such, you know, but the further we got away from that land, the whacker we got to the point we were taking captivity and completely lost our heritage pretty much, you know. So it's very, the, the, the most high calculated all of that, man, you know. The water for that, that was, that was pretty what much What verse it, was that you just read? Uh, verse 14. Revelation 12 and 14. I got a precept. This is alluding to what you said, um, Shahar, about um, Israel in uh, a time of uh, the siege, which is uh, going to be re-administered into today's time. And so this is a precept. This is uh, 24, uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse, I'll start at 15. And this is red letters, so this is Yahweh Shah speaking. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso read it, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything of his house. Mm, and that abomination of desolation always goes back to when they sacked the temple. Okay? When you go into it with Titus, really with Vespasian, they went into that temple and took everything out of it. You know? Destroyed it utterly. Literally, utterly. You know? That's why Yahweh Shai said, not one stone shall be left unturned. Okay? When you go into it right now, there's a wall that they pray to. It's called the Wailing Wall. You know? Fort Shekinah. You know? Which really those, those so-called Jews are humping it. Because it goes into a fertility deity, Shekinah. Even these churches will sing about Shekinah glory, Shekinah glory. That goes into a completely other idol. And that's Fort Antonia that they're praying to. Okay, that's, that's not that. All right, but when you go into it, they went in there. All right, and later on, they'd actually built the Roman Colosseum. The Roman Colosseum, for those that might not know, was literally erected off of the, the money that they are, the, the riches that they had taken from our temple. Which shows you how much was in the temple. You know, they built that whole Colosseum. And also they had built what was called the Ark of Titus. All right, and the Ark of Titus was, was really orchestrated to be built by Domitian. Okay, but when you go into the images that's placed on an Ark of Titus, you got those Roman soldiers that are walking out carrying the golden candlestick. All right, that's, well, you can see that when you look at an image of it. And that goes to them destroying the temple and taking all the riches out. Just like what Nebuchadnezzar did. They have a replica of that in uh, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. They sure do. Man, they I sure know. do. Yep. Mm -hmm. the That's right. They say. gloated about our downfall. Mm -hmm. You got that now. One of the seven wonders of the world is the Roman Colosseum, bro. Seven wonders of the world. Because they're like, this is one of the great achievements of mankind. Mm -hmm. Man, <laughs> to take down Israel <laughs> and to build off of their riches. Man. Yeah, man. That's heavy. Come on. We can jump back into that uh, in that second Ezra 11. Come on. Um, I think we left off in like verse 33, 34. Yeah, uh, I'll read 32. This is uh, second Ezra 11 and 32. It says, but this head put the whole earth in fear and bear rule in it over all those that dwelt upon the earth with much oppression. Mm -hmm. And it had the governance of the world more than all the wings that had been. Mm -hmm. And after this, I beheld and lo. My bad, more than the wings that had been. Flavian Dynasty was doing a thing in wickedness. Yeah. You got it. I was going to say they have like way. more more territory that time too. More they, territory as well. Yeah. More people under them and more death. Mm-hmm. Mm it was doing a lot, bro. It says in verse 33, and after this I beheld and lo. The head that was in the midst suddenly appeared no more, like as the wings. Mm -hmm. At his time he was gone. But there remained two heads, which also in the sort ruled upon the earth, 
and over those that dwelt therein. So that first head was Vespasian, and Vespasian died. All right, you can actually look this up for yourself. Vespasian, you know, you watched the movie uh, Life, where they was getting ready to get let loose, and he went to the bathroom, and he ain't come back. He literally died on the shitter. That's how Vespasian died, dookieing on himself. You know, he died of immense diarrhea. One of his latter words when he died on the deathbed was like, I believe I'm becoming a god. You know, so excuse my friends, but he died. He lasted until his, his death, shitty end. His death was, um, his death was, um, um, Basically, they, they uh, it's rumored that he died. Of, he died of like a, some like stomach cancer. It's rumored mm -hmm. that like someone poisoned him. There's this multiple kind of like stories about how he actually died of the issue that he had, mm -hmm. whether it was some type of viral disease or whether he actually got poisoned. Because when you read about Vespasian, because that was Titus's son, right? Vespasian was the father. The Vespasian was the father. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of just controversy going on in that mm -hmm. time. And, you know, whether he was going to be accepted or not, still was up in the air. He, he had his campaigns mm -hmm. where Titus was fighting for him. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right. Titus was the son mm -hmm. fighting the Jews. Right. Yep. Yes. Fighting the Jews. Yes. And so there was a lot going on with that, you know. So mm -hmm. you, there you'll get different accounts on how he died. That's know, right. Whether it was natural causes or whether he was actually poisoned. Mm -hmm. It's up in the air. Yeah, that's right. The nigga was bloated. He bloated <laughs> with Dookie on his sheets. Yeah, he was through. All right, bro. Enough, dude. Enough, dude. Oh man. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was taking probiotics. Man, he was hurt. He was hurt, bro. <laughs> you think I'm becoming a god? Grant. <laughs> Verse 34. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians chapter 11, verse 34 says, But there remain two heads, which also in the sort ruled upon the earth mm -hmm. and over those that dwelt therein. And I beheld, and lo, the head upon the right side devoured it, that was upon the left that's side. That's right. That's right. Them two heads were again Titus and Domitian. All right. Now, uh, certain people will say that Titus. Um, there's there's different theories that are out there of how Titus died. Certain people will say he died in a fire. Certain scholars believe that he was murdered. Certain people even believe that he was poisoned by his brother. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe happened because the that's scriptures say that it was devoured. It, it makes sense. It makes yeah. more sense. Yes. Poisoned him or something. Mm -hmm. But all of these guys was just fighting, bro. Like yeah. the whole time it was just infight. Yep. They were paying people off, trying to get positions. Mm -hmm. The whole time. That's why they make so many movies about this era because it's so much drama. Yeah. Bro. Straight up. It's kind of it's like constant drama, bro. Yeah. Straight up. Okay. It says in verse thirty-five. Let me see if I can pull up Titus. And I beheld, and lo, the head that. Uh, the head upon the right side devoured it that was on the left side, verse 36. I got a quick precept. Mm -hmm. Second Ezra 12 and 28. It says, For the uh, it says, For the sword of one shall devour the other, mm -hmm. but at the last he shall fall through the sword himself. That's right. All right, and that's going into those two. Yep. When you read about the 12th chapter, it is a breakdown of the 11th, you know, mm -hmm. but it's not fundamentally, well, it is fundamentally broken down. This is the more complex version of it because we actually know who these people are, mm -hmm. okay? Kind of, kind of, it says in verse 36, it says, Then I heard a voice which said unto me, Look before thee and consider the thing that thou seest. And I beheld, and lo, as it were, a roaring lion chased out of the wood. A roaring lion chased out of the wood. Okay, so this is after the brother of the Sarah Quad pointed out earlier that this is a little snippet of America's judgment too. Okay, a lot of these prophecies have to do with duality. Generally, this is talking about Rome, but America is that little horn that came out of this dragon. Okay, so Yahweh Shai represents this lion that came out of the wood. Okay, and by the way, this is the only other reference, okay, that you read about, which also shows you the validity of the Apocrypha. Because when you go into the Lion of Judah written in Revelation 5, in the scriptures that we have today, without the Apocrypha, that's the only mention of Yahweh Shai being described as a lion. lion. All right. Other than this here in 2nd Ezra 11 and 12. 
Once again, shows you the validity of the scriptures that we have right now, the Apocrypha. All right. This is the only other references to Yahweh Shai being a lion here in 2nd Ezra 11 and 12. Okay. You can type in lion on the blue letter. And the only one that will refer to Yahweh Shai is Revelation 5. Okay. So you talk. So basically that lion coming out, chased out of the wood is Yahweh Shai. That is Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai. Yeah. And he's returning. Mm -hmm. To a Rome, he's, he's returning to the second Rome. Right. That's right. Because when you read Daniel yep. seven chapter, he comes right after that little horn rules. That's right. And does speaks great things. That's right. That That's he true. goes in and out of different time frames and how he even went into how they will wear, wear us out. This form mm -hmm. that that little horn wore mm -hmm. us out. Straight but up. That's where Yahweh Shai wow. returns. When you look at That's prophecy. Right. That's right. If you look at prophecy. It all ends through that little horn. Mm -hmm. That's where the Lord sends his son. Man. When you read Daniel the seventh chapter. Right. Right? Absolutely. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. That's when Yahweh Shai returns through that little horn. That's right. After that little <laughs> horn's rule, yeah, yeah. That's what, which is proof that that's Esau. Man. Because the end of the world. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> brother. Yeah. That's right. You know or seven. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Come. Yeah. Come. Now that's, that's talking about Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's Nebuchadnezzar. Because yeah. yeah. when you read uh, Daniel the seventh chapter, uh, that uh, beast is likened into a lion with wings on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The, that's right. You know the the the, 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 Bab the Syrian Babylonian Empire. Okay. Mm -hmm. cool. Nebuchadnezzar was actually a Syrian. He was a Syrian. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So, Come. Yeah. I got a I got a precept though too with um. Just to show that that lion right there is talking about Yahweh Shai. This is uh, 2 Nezer 12 and 31. And the lion whom thou sawest rising up out of the wood and roaring and speaking to the eagle and rebuking her for her unrighteousness with all the words which thou hast heard. This is the anointed which the highest hath kept for them and for their wickedness unto the end. Which shows you again that little horn right, right there is America. Right, right. Because we would be raised up too. Mm -hmm. The Lord would send the Holy Spirit down yep. after that three days and a half, and we would go out and prophesy. That's also That's right. a part of that lion rebuking. That's right. We would be prophesying, man. We would be chanting this bitch down, standing in great boldness. So it's a whole, it's, it's the Most High, Yahweh mm -hmm. and that, them, that, them elect men man. who have the new song. They're going to speak it into existence. That's right. That's right. They're sent to be, you know, to speak it. God. You know what I'm saying? But the Lord, uh, Yahweh Shah, gave us the word here in this captivity. That's right. That's and right. You said that was in 2nd Exodus 12. And what? Yeah, 1231, and I'm in the middle of 32. Oh, shit. It, it says, This is the anointed which the highest have kept for them mm -hmm. and for their wickedness unto the end. He shot, because remember, he's, he's rebuking that eagle, like the yeah. other said. It shows you that this is the reenactment of that eagle, pretty much. Mm -hmm. That's right. So. He shall reprove them and shall upbraid them with their cruelty. Judah shall be in the neck of his enemies. That's right. <laughs> That's right. God. Mm -hmm. Verse 33 says, For he shall set them before him alive in judgment and shall rebuke them and correct them. You know, makes me think of in Proverbs, it goes to um, a cruel Lord, you know, shall loosely paraphrase and rebuke them. You know, which is talking about Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. All right, the Most High is coming with violence. Yeah. You know, and he's coming with violence, man. Okay, he's coming with threats. Okay, it's a threat that we that we utter and rebuke, and these are threats, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, he's coming to devour. <laughs> That's right. God. Make a promise. That's right. Because when you read Daniel seven, it, remember it just jumps to the ancient of days. Mm -hmm. That's the Most High setting his judgment, opening the books. Mm. And he's going to send Yahweh Shah to get them who are written in the book. But it says, one likened unto the Son of Man. Notice after that fourth beast, that's when he come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm. this is that lion. That's, that's, this, but it starts here with that's us right. speaking it into existence. That's right. Beautiful, man. Whew. I got chills. Yeah. Uh, continue on. Second Ezra chapter 11. And uh, I'll read verse 37 again. It says, and I beheld, and lo, as it were, a roaring lion chased out of the wood. And I saw that he sent out a man's voice unto the eagle and said, Hear thou, I will talk with thee, and the highest shall say unto thee, Art thou not it that remainest of the fourth beast? The, of the four fourth beasts. Beast? Daniel 7 talks about the four beasts. So he's giving them the breakdown. He's expounding on him this fourth beast. You know, 
Daniel ain't even get that. You know, he just was told a fourth beast. Right. You know. I mean, he went in a little bit, but oh, not oh like yeah. this. You know oh yeah. Saying? Absolutely. Yeah. He he showed him a lot of what we, what he would do. Daniel was like, actually fucked up by the vision. Like, yeah. He was like, Damn. Yeah. He, he got he would <laughs> stick to his yeah. stomach. Mm-hmm. He was he, hurt. he saw you know the shit that was going colors. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he saw all this shit. TLC. He was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> he, saw, he saw Jake right through. Yeah, like, he saw the beast ruling. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right, bro. Jason Waterfalls. <laughs> what was the <laughs> <laughs> What is this? Yeah. The perm. Two <laughs> rags. <laughs> Man. Yeah, yeah, he's seen Jake in the he's seen he's seen Jake in a low state. He saw this beast rule. He saw him mm-hmm. drunken with the blood of the saints. That's right. That's Iceberg. right. Iceberg. Oh wow. Uh, continuing on in verse thirty nine. Art the <coughs> excuse me. Art thou not it that remainest of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my world? In my world. In my. That the end of their times might come through them. Hmm. That's it, man. That's I'm how you know this talking about right. Esau, bro. That's right. Cause you gotta look at prophetically, bro. Corner that you gotta corner this nigga, bro. Obadiah, it, it, get Obadiah the last verse. Mm-hmm. I love making this point, bro. <laughs> the last verse in Obadiah, bro. This is how you link Esau, okay. the end of the world, to that fourth beast. Obadiah, okay. Obadiah, verse 21. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. Yep. So if if you matching it up, mm-hmm. this fourth beast got to be Esau. Right. Because it's through his fall that the kingdom is going to be the Lord. The Lord is going to set up Yahweh Shai's kingdom on earth. Man, yeah, I'm telling you, Esau is the end of the world. world. Jacob is, Jacob Jacob is, is the beginning dead. of it. The so right. this can't be Japheth. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. The sign showed the Lord's on his way back soon, so it's got to yeah. be Esau. Yeah. Kind of, kind of. Keep going? Yeah, we can keep going. I was looking for one of Joel, but it's all good. The point was made beautifully. Uh, second Ezra chapter 11, verse 40. Yep. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past had power over the world with great fearfulness mm-hmm. and over the whole compass of the earth which uh, with which much wicked oppression. You see it said the whole compass because that little horn had to rule and that was Babylon. That's where Esau had the fullness mm-hmm. north, south, east, west. His policy dominated. You know, the sword, he dominated with his sword through this America, the NATO and the EU. They had mm-hmm. control Pretty much over north, so they got control of this bitch. Lord, That's right. Lord. Yeah, because Rome, they they had control of that known world, but it wasn't the whole compass of the right. earth. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. So it was fulfilled. Esau's blessing was real fulfilled through this beast yeah, system, this mm-hmm. little season. You know, hmm. it says. <clears throat> um, verse forty-one. Oh, you, you I'm gonna finish verse, verse forty. 40. Yeah. It says, and so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, lying <laughs> wonders. Yeah, you know, with all deceivableness, man. Five Second Ezra 2. Five 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 yeah, yep. Yeah. Second Thessalonians 2. Yeah. That's him. It's some shit. And it's deep. It's deeper than we even know. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of shit we think real ain't real, bro. It's not real. Yeah. A it's lot true. of the history we know, like, there's a, a lot of shit that was just him creating shit and just being a demon, bro. Right. He's a real motherfucking wizard, bro. Yeah. The devil. He's a liar, bro. Mm-hmm. Come. It says, verse 41, For the earth hast thou not judged with truth. There we go. For thou hast afflicted the meek. Thou hast hurt the peaceable. And he's getting cursed. He, this is that lion cursing out. Mm-hmm. This is what he's saying to him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and basically this is what we're saying to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> go ahead. Come. It says, Thou hast loved liars and destroyed the dwellings of them that brought forth fruit and hast cast down the walls of such as did thee no harm. I got a quick precept real quick. Mm-hmm. 
This is 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, that we were going to earlier, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Under that witchcraft that he's putting out there, you know? Mm -hmm. That's right. That was 2 Thessalonians 2, starting 8 and 11. Okay, uh, I have a precept too, if you don't mind me. Yeah, yeah, come. This is uh, Psalms chapter 55, verse 20. He hath put forth his hands against su such, as be, such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. Mm -hmm. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. So that's Esau's overall general mindset is just to take over mm -hmm. you know to use his sword to deceive or to use his tongue to deceive and use his sword to why you turn around and why you trusting him and got a little sliver of hope that he's not gonna kill you thrust you through man mm -hmm. so I will. Nope. Yep. yep that's right and that was a uh, psalms what 55 and 20 that red flare spirit mm-hmm come this is Ecclesiastes chapter 13, verse 7. So like it. Uh, verse 7, it says, And uh, he will shame thee by his meat until he hath drawn thee dry mm. twice or thrice. Mm. And at the last... He going to put you through that, that hamster wheel, man. He going <laughs> to work you to death. Rat race. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Hey, you remember when the Thomas Jefferson was president? Man. He was doing so much wickedness, bro. He had Jake working dang near literally all day and gave them like three hours of sleep. You know, constantly, bro, wringing us dry. Well, he he he, uh, he uh, did say that they didn't need rest. Right. They, they, they were free. That was, a, that was a common understanding of the Edomites back then. You know, that we didn't need rest. You know, we didn't, we didn't show emotion. We were three-fifths of a human being. Uh, yeah. You know? Well, just to finish it out, it, it says... Uh, 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 and he will uh, uh, draw thee dry uh, uh, twice, even thrice, and at the, the last he will laugh, laugh thee to scorn afterward. Man, tax you, you know, tell you that you the problem, make America great again, you niggas is crazy. That's what he do, bro. Points the finger, bro. Uh, it, it says, uh, when he seeth thee, he will forsake thee, and shake his head at thee. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, come. Continuing on, Second Ezra chapter eleven, and verse forty-four. Excuse me, verse forty-three. Therefore is thy wrongful dealing come up unto the highest, and thy pride unto the mighty. Mm -hmm. That's right. Go back to that Obadiah, the first chapter. You yeah. know, thy pride. That that pride is on fleek. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he took it there. He took it there, man. Revelation eleven talks. About, I'm sorry. Revelation eighteen talks about his sins has reached all the way up to heaven. That's right. You know, man, the Lord has stored all of it. I mean, he he got it written down anyway, but he literally set them up to be the perfect devil, and is about to overthrow them in a way dramatic fashion. That's right. You know, God. verse forty four. It says, "The highest also hath looked upon the proud times, and behold." They are ended, and his abominations are fulfilled. His abom 144, right, his right. abominations are fulfilled, bro. Right. The Most High will have them at that perfect time, right when they about to fill their belly, the inside they be put in straights. Mm -hmm. Their abominations are fulfilled. And then, uh, real quick, second is a 15. That's cool. I got it right here. No, I was holding it for y'all. Oh, yeah. that's the spirit. Yeah, that's Come. Second is 15. And I'll be talking five. The whole said, the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Hurtful works are fulfilled. Okay, that's that wickedness being fulfilled. Through this bitch. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we at the end, man. Rejoice, bro. According to prophecy, this gotta be it. <laughs> this gotta be it, man. In my opinion. I believe so too. Prophecy's on the way, man. Yeah, that's right. Man. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. 
That's uh, right, man. That's it. It's times we look at it, everything Esau's about to do, the guillotine, all the stuff that he's done, and it could be like, damn. Yeah. Revelation 18 says, Rejoice, ye holy apostles and prophets, for the Lord hath avenged you. Uh -huh. You know, we in the time of salvation. We ain't in, we ain't in the time of our destruction. Right. We've been through that already, man. When you read it in Ezekiel 35, it talks about the iniquity of Israel is, goes into the, being fulfilled. Yeah. You know, it's it's the Lord is getting ready to take us home, bro. Yeah. Right. Right. We in the time of salvation right now, not in Jacob's trouble. Yeah, you know, it's going, we shall be saved out of it. Right. Yeah. So when you look at this, for those of you that are listening and, we, and we're talking about these things, one of the points that Elder Yashwamba made was the realization of how detrimental Esau's influence is on the earth. Not only to us as a people, us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, but to the Most High's creation in general. Because the creation of the Heavenly Father is precious. And we are set to dominate it, or rule over it in righteousness. And because of Esau's wickedness, mm -hmm. the Heavenly Father... Heavenly Father's creation, something that is set to be eternal, like the seasons and plant life and life in general is set to just reset itself over and over, just like your body. So it's, it's set to just be in an immortal state underneath Esau, it's dead. So we read this in 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter. You read this in Obadiah, you go to Isaiah, the 24th chapter, where it talks about how this person is ruling. You combine that with Isaiah the 14th chapter and what we read about in Revelation 18, you get a bigger picture of why mm -hmm. the judgment that's coming on the planet Earth is so right. large and powerful. Right. That's right. Okay? Yeah. And that's what we're reading about. We're not just reading about an entity of Esau, this guy that's red and hairy. No. Come, He's come. grown himself into this dragon, into this beast system. And we get a glimpse of that system as we read 2nd Ezra the 11th chapter. It's scope. How policies is running all through it. How dynamic they ruling. When you go and actually look at the history of these 12 Caesars, you're going to be up all day. Mm -hmm. There's so much that so happened. Hot. Right? And we're not even talking about the Greeks. Right. <laughs> that right, made, right. that mean, and the Romans make the Greeks look like a joke. Yeah. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And the Greeks showed their head. And the Greeks showed their whole the ass. ass. That's right. So, yeah, yeah. man. The Most High's got heavy judgment, you know? That's right. I have a quick question to back up. Uh, Revelation 11, 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, at the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Boom. Boom. That's it. He gonna get it. <laughs> You want to say? Okay, 2nd Ezra chapter 11, verse 45, it says, And therefore appear no more, thou eagle, nor thy horrible wings, nor thy wicked feathers, nor thy malicious heads. Hey, malicious means with insidious intentions, man. You know, with very wicked ideas and intentions, bro. Yeah, wicked. yeah wickedness is going to be through, bro. That's right. Hey, that's why you read it in Proverbs uh, 29th chapter goes into when when transgression when wicked is multiplied also transgression when the wicked are multiplied you know so yeah when Esau got in power man showed his whole ass and it's gonna take another being a cosmic being from another dimension to come and put an end to it man you know the greatest story of all time you got it it says nor thy malicious heads nor thy hurtful claws nor all thy vain body that all the earth may be refreshed and may return, being delivered from thy violence, and that she may hope for the judgment and mercy of him that made her. Talking about Israel, man. All right, so it's going to take Esau all the way from being a devil to fulfilling that role for the Most High to send his son Yahweh back so man. we can have dominion on the earth, you know. But yeah, I mean, that, that was, unless anybody got any points or whatever. Cool. All right. Well, hey, look, that was Second Ezra, the eleventh chapter. Lord's willing. Lord's willing. It was edifying. Okay. Oh, and by the way, even uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the brother read it earlier. The other brother read it earlier. Going into um, the five good emperors. After those four, those four uh, wicked rulers ruled after the mission. You actually had emperors that ruled that were Israelites, mm -hmm. starting with Nerva. You know, and that led on later on into what was called the Holy Roman Empire. Later on. With Constantine and them, which is called the Byzantine Empire, but 
After that, that's when Jake pretty much started ruling ancient Rome as well. Just as a, as a footnote. Con. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that was pretty much it. I got one real quick, real quick. Con, con. Psalms 85 and 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from earth. That's just how our rationale tries to spirit look down upon us. That's why the truth is coming out. That's right. That's Obviously, right, bro. the only way out of this. I don't see no other way. That's right, bro. That's it, bro. Con, con. But Lord's will, it was edifying. Yeah. We want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you elect that are doing your lots, fulfilling your lots in righteousness all over the four corners of the earth. Shalom. 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 Shalom.